Lately, I've been on a summer outfit kick and I've got one more to show you. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jennifer Moore, helping you discover your love of sewing. In this edition, we are talking about a tank top and short set that I made for summer. Now this look is perfect for summer music festivals. If you're going out a lot, it's lightweight, it's breezy, and it's a really fun print. So I made this out of a poly crepe that I got from Craftsy. Believe it or not, it was $10 for two yards. Definitely not a bad price. And the one benefit to working with polyester is that you don't need to pre-wash the fabric. Any synthetic fibers typically won't shrink in the laundry, but any natural fibers do. So I could get right into cutting and sewing it. So let me tell you about this outfit. The top is actually Simplicity 1693 and I made view F. And one thing I did learn is that I thought these tops were interchangeable, so I actually thought I could add sleeves to it. So I cut sleeves, but then I learned that the bodice pieces are different between views. So if you are making views E or F, you actually cannot add sleeves. So that's just something that's good to know. Now this top wasn't too difficult to make. I had made it before in a similar lightweight fabric. Um, I will say working with polyester crepe is not a lot of fun. I had a lot of headaches with sewing with it. It's, it's a bit tricky to work with. If you're new to sewing, this is not a fabric that I would recommend you just start off with. I think the biggest problem I had was with hemming. It's hard to press polyester crepe, I'm gonna be honest. Even trying to like fold, fold a hemline and press it was a little difficult. So I kind of used my fingers to press it and then I pinned a lot. And it was fine during the straight parts of the fabric, but when I got to the curvy parts at the hem, like at the back, I had a little bit of trouble and parts of my hem were a bit wonky. Now, the armholes and neckline of this top are done with bias binding. So I made my own bias binding out of the same fabric and it worked out pretty, pretty okay. And then the back has a closure of a hook and eye. And I'm actually gonna link you to a Craftsy blog post because it was very helpful. It was a post about how to hand sew a hook and eye the right way. So I had actually had to redo that part. I did it the wrong way first, which did not look good. And then I saw the blog post and my second attempt was much better. But I think the top is fun. Um, I, I didn't have too much trouble with the fit. I did sew my shoulder hem with the slightly larger seam allowance because I have smaller shoulders, but the armholes for this pattern turned out a lot better than some of my previous tops. So I was very happy about that. And overall, I think this is a fun top. I can wear it with jeans. I can wear it with other bottoms, not just the shorts. But I'm, I'm a big fan of this shirt. And I like how it sort of has an asymmetrical bottom to it. So I think that added a little bit of visual interest. So let's get to the shorts. These are actually a free pattern that I hacked. It's from Pearl Soho and it's called the City Gym Short. And I've seen lots of people making this free pattern on Instagram. And this is actually my third pair. So this pattern is a PDF, so you do have to print it, cut it, tape the pieces together. And I've actually already added some length. So there is a line where you can either lengthen or shorten it. Now I'm gonna be honest, these shorts are like short shorts. Like they're like Daisy Dukes. So the first pair I made, I really can't wear outside the house. So I actually added like an inch and a half to the pattern just so that it would be more of an appropriate length for me. So what I did, and let me show you the original shorts. Yes, we're bringing out the butt mannequin here. So the original shorts call for you to basically put bias binding on all of the edges, and then you kind of wrap the front around to the back, and then you stitch it in place. I actually did the opposite with these shorts. I brought the back to the front and had that be towards the front. And then I added this mini pom-pom trim in mint green. And I think that really added some, again, some more interest to the shorts. I think they would have been kind of boring without it. But let me kind of show you how I hacked this pattern. So let me take the front pieces. So because I knew I wanted the back to wrap around to the front, I wanted to add a little more curve to the pattern pieces. So I took this curve ruler and then I just went from the regular pattern and I used tracing paper 
and then I created my own curve because I wanted them to look to be a little more curvy rather than boxy and then I did it to both pieces and I think that actually worked pretty well. So that is how I hacked my Pearl uh, City Gym Shorts pattern and you can do that pretty easily yourself if you'd like. That was my first time really hacking a pattern and I think it turned out, the results turned out okay. So yeah, so this is the difference between the regular pattern pieces and the hacked pieces, just that I added this extra curve. And it's because when I wanted the back to curve around to the front, I didn't want it to be so straight. I did want it to have a little more of a rounded edge. And I thought that would be more interesting and I thought that would look better with the pom-pom trim that I chose. So that's what I did to the City Gym Shorts pattern. If you've made this pattern, let me know because I've seen it all over the place. You can do all kinds of different things with this pattern. You can have the front and back pieces be different prints. You can have the bias trim be different, the waistband. So there's so much you can do with this pattern and it's free, which is the awesome part. Because poly crepe is such a delicate fabric, I added some lightweight interfacing to just the waistband portion, just because I knew it would be getting a lot of wear and tear from you know, me putting on the shorts, taking them off, and it, just the waistband does tend to be a high traffic area. And instead of using a one inch uh, elastic, I used one and a half inch. I found that I actually really like using the wider width elastic. I prefer wide waistbands. I'm not sure why that is, but I do. So having that one and a half inch waist instead of the one inch, I think just makes my garment feel a little more secure and comfortable. So if you are thinking about making these shorts, I would definitely recommend using that wider width elastic if you like a wide waistband. And I think the brand I used was Druitz. You can get it pretty much anywhere and I'll link it below. You do need to then cut your waistband piece wider than the pattern recommends. If you are doing a one and a half inch waistband, you could really do about four, four and a half inches and that would be just fine because you do need to leave some room in there for a seam allowance for when you are sewing the waistband to the main part of the shorts. So I just wanted to share some of these uh, summer outfits I've been making. And if you've been making stuff, let me know and be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm at Sewing Report. And you're welcome to tag me or hashtag Sewing Report Squad. I'd love to see what you're making as well. And this is all part of my 2017 handmade wardrobe project. But I'm gonna be honest, I think I'm gonna stay away from poly crepe for a while and get back to some more natural fibers because I did find this fabric was a little tricky to work with. So I will see you next time. I'm Jennifer Moore for The Sewing Report.